Now, researchers have claimed that the oil giant ExxonMobil accurately forecast how burning fossil fuels would cause the planet to warm going as far back as the 1970s. Now, that's based on a new study by scientists at Harvard University and the Potsdam Institute of Climate Change. They say Exxon's own experts produced models on warming that were even more accurate than NASA's projections. The report's authors say Exxon made public statements that contradicted its own scientific data, including the claim that climate action wasn't an urgent problem. Now, here's a chart from the report. The researchers say it compares ExxonMobil's predictions of temperature rise, represented here by the grey lines, with the actual temperature increases that we've seen, that is, the line in red. Well, ExxonMobil has denied the allegations of any sort of cover-up, and they responded by releasing this statement to the BBC. It reads... ExxonMobil is committed to being part of the solution to climate change and the risks it poses. The oil giant says the issue has come up several times in recent years and its answer always remains the same. Those who suggest we knew are wrong. It adds ExxonMobil is actively engaged in efforts to reduce emissions. Well, Justin Rowlett is our climate editor. He says the researchers behind this study poured over ExxonMobil's own data to make their judgments. And essentially, they were marking Exxon's homework. Mm. They were saying, OK, so you say that these, you were saying back then those, these climate models uh, uh, don't work, aren't, aren't, aren't useful, aren't predicting the future well. What were you actually doing? And they've discovered that their climate scientists, their in-house climate scientists at Exxon, were actually very good at predicting how the climate was likely to change in the future. So, for example, I don't know if you remember, but back in the 70s, 80s and even the early 90s, people were talking about a coming ice age. Well, they said that's not going to happen. In fact, we're going to go into a kind of super interglacial a very warm period. They predicted when we detect the first uh, influence of human beings on the climate, about 2000, that detection was made and they got that spot on. They also worked out what the carbon budget would be, how much carbon we could emit in the atmosphere to stay within two degrees of pre-industrial temperatures. They got all of that right. In fact, better than, there's a really famous climate, climate mm. scientist at NASA called James Hansen, who's the kind of, you know, regarded as the world expert on this. They were outperforming him, not just by a, a small margin, by a really significant significant margin. These were really good scientists, yet at the same time as recently as 2013, the CEO of Exxon was saying climate models aren't particularly useful for predicting what the future is going to say. So there is a contradiction there, and uh, which, you know, obviously these climate, these sci these, uh, this study is, is, is keen to point up. Well, that was Justin Rowlett. Let's cross live now to Berlin and join Professor Stefan Ramstorff, who is one of the study's co-authors and is the co-head of research, uh, the research department on Earth System Analysis at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. Uh, now, Dr. Ramstorff, let's just be clear. What access did you have to ExxonMobil's own analyses and data going back some 40 or 50 years? Well, these uh, papers by Exxon, they have been in the public domain for a number of years, uh, brought there by journalists. And uh, my Harvard colleagues who are uh, science historians have already done an analysis and published it some years ago on the verbal statements in these papers. And what we have done now is to look quantitatively at the projections by climate models uh, that were presented by Exxon. And they got it pretty well exactly right, predicting the world would warm by about 0 0.2 degrees per decade before any warming uh, was even observed. Was it part of your remit to figure out what Exxon did with this information, these forecasts that were coming from their own internal research department? Well, yes, our paper detailed some quotes by Exxon executives, which were clearly designed to cast doubt on climate science and make the whole issue appear uh, not urgent and highly uncertain, even though uh, they knew what was happening just as much as uh, other academic scientists, for example, predicted correctly the global warming that was coming.
Right. I mean, this is based on, on forecasts to a certain extent. This is nothing more than speculation. What ExxonMobil say today is categorically they reject any notion of a cover up. They deny and refute any notion that they knew back in the 1970s that burning fossil fuels was going to be fundamentally damaging to the planet, planet in terms of, of global warming. What, what do you say to that position? Well, we know that their scientists presented to the Exxon leadership these results and uh, they, these results, they came with uncertainty margins and uh, it was very clear that there would be a significant warming there and there's no way these modeling results uh, could suggest that there, there is a possibility of no warming. What, what ExxonMobil today uh, stresses is that they are absolutely determined to be, quote, part of the solution when it comes to climate change, not part of the problem. Do you, do you feel that your re report has anything to say about the sort of politics of all of this, about the way that we should view uh, the quote unquote big oil companies and their role in the future of, of trying to decarbonize the planet? Well, of course, these companies make many statements of how they are part of the solutions, but uh, there are other scientists, not, not within our research, but people that have looked at where they actually put their money. And it's uh, not always uh, what their words are saying. So I would really love them to be part of the solution, but I need to be, I remain to be convinced uh, that they really are working towards that. All right. Well, Stefan Ramstorff, we thank you very much indeed for joining us. And I'm sure many people will want to read more about your report. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.